Man oh man oh man is this some exciting news out of nowhere. Cyberpunk 2077 is one of those gaming projects that just seems to build more and more hype around it with every new little detail. And they've really mastered the art of marketing across several mediums. I mean, this is one of those games that even a lot of non-gamers know all about just because of how breathtaking some of its iconic announcements have become. And with the studio behind Cyberpunk 2077 being CD Projekt Red, the excitement is understandably high. These are the guys that really know how to master game production in a way that doesn't crunch its employees, doesn't rush a game out to hit some arbitrary release date, and doesn't gouge out the price to all of their fans to make profits upon profits. From practically every aspect of the production, these guys know how to do games well and ethically. And that's truly a breath of fresh air in the modern gaming industry. But of course, the reason we're even here today isn't to talk about their work ethics, however great they may be, as CD Projekt Red has gone even further beyond to satisfy as many people as possible from all sorts of interests to coagulate onto the world of Cyberpunk 2077. And really, we all should have predicted this. With their previous masterpiece being the likes of The Witcher 3, which very much made some waves through their Netflix adaptation, I guess we all should have known that yet another Netflix adaptation was popping up for the other side of their iconage. Yes, you read it right, they're making a Cyberpunk 2077 anime. But honestly, if that's all you know, then you haven't even scratched the surface of why this is as exciting as it is. So let's get into every detail we know and see where this new revelation can go from here. For those of you who don't know, as this channel is mostly built up on more film and TV content, with a couple exceptions here and there, Cyberpunk 2077 is an upcoming video game based off of the tabletop role-playing game franchise, Cyberpunk. The game's all about this futuristic cyberpunk world where there's a lot of underground crime and higher-up corruption, and the average person is obsessed with technological advancements that modify their own bodies into different electronic tools. In the game, you play as a badass kind of mercenary character who meets all kinds of colourful characters in the city of... Night City. And though the small character details we do know about this new anime does seem to have similarities to our protagonist of the game, it has been confirmed that this will be an entirely separate story, simply taking place in the same world with a whole new set of characters. Even still, the world is, as the name suggests, all things cyberpunk. Futuristic, grimy, and very cool to look at. So with that little bit of foundation established, what exactly makes this anime series so inviting and hype-inducing? Well, really, it comes down to one massive announcement regarding this anime project. Whilst people were blown away with the quality of The Witcher 3 as a well-rounded and fully produced game, and people were blown away again by their reach to cast Keanu Reeves of all people as one of the starring characters, and then people were blown away again with the Netflix adaptation of Witcher and the sudden appeal of Henry Cavill, now, once again, people are blown away with the reach of these CD Projekt Red projects, that's a weird phrase to say, as they haven't just settled for any generic anime producer to create some half assed animation series. No, instead, they've gotten one of the largest and most iconic anime studios available. Studio Trigger. And it doesn't just end there. With it being their 10th year anniversary soon, Studio Trigger are planning on pulling out all of the stops for this upcoming production putting in all of their top tier creators to the works on this cyberpunk series. Now again, if you're not too familiar with the anime history of the studio, as I've only really dabbled in anime content once, let me give you a brief catch up. Studio Trigger are known for some incredibly iconic anime, and a lot of the team working on cyberpunk are directly connected to these icons, surprise surprise. For example, director Hiroyuki Imaishi is known for the likes of Kill la Kill and the hugely successful anime film Promare. Assistant director Masahiku Otsuka similarly has Promare under their belt as well as an anime called Guran Lagan. Creative director Hiromi Wakabayashi worked on Kill la Kill again. Character designers Yo Yoshinari and Yuto Kaneko are a little bit newer with accolades in Little Witch Academia and BNA Brand New Animal. The people in charge of the adapted screenplay are Yoshiki Yusa, known for SSSS Gridman, or Tss Gridman, I'm pretty sure it's SSSS Gridman, I'm an idiot, and Promare again, with the help of Masahiko Otsuka again, the old assistant director, who also wrote Little Witch Academia and Guran Lagan. Now, that's quite a lot to follow, but should help paint a pretty noteworthy picture of just what kind of experience is founding the production of this cyberpunk anime. 
But of course, there is way more. An extra surprise announcement for this project was actually the composer, Akira Yamaoka, who's also famously known for their work on Silent Hill. That's certainly unexpected. And then there's all the other iconic series that the studio has produced in their decade runtime, with a couple others to note including Darling in the Franks and a few video game intro animations like Shantae and the Seven Sirens. And before forming Studio Trigger, some members had also worked on classic anime giants like Evangelion as well. Overall, this is just a hugely competent anime studio that only has some of the best backing in the industry going for it. This project is literally being headed by giants. So let's talk about the actual details of this new anime, shall we, as a few pieces have already been given to us. For a start, it is titled to be Cyberpunk Edge Runners, following an original story of a street kid trying to survive in a technology and body modification obsessed city of the future. Having everything to lose, he chooses to stay alive by becoming an edge runner, a mercenary outlaw also known as a cyberpunk. That's pretty on the nose and tells a pretty simple story. Of course he's become a mercenary like the game protagonist, and of course he gets called a cyberpunk, but even still, with such a basic foundation, there's all sorts of room to grow this series out in the massive world of cyberpunk. It's certainly got its own massive history to play with. Other details we know about the series is that it will be a 10 episode story and that it's coming to Netflix. It's hoped to be the gateway show into introducing people to the world of cyberpunk and potentially the game as well. And I mean, really, what a masterful marketing approach. Tackling the series as both a company that cares about quality over profit, reeling in the generic public with a Keanu Reeves announcement, reeling in those anime fans with some genuine quality, and releasing it on the media giant Netflix just all feels like the perfect way to service as many people as possible, and I have good faith that it could really work out fantastically with people focusing so much attention on doing this right. It's not just some rushed side projects, this is fully realized. And hey, if you're liking my stuff so far, do consider subscribing. I don't do a lot of anime content usually, but if this video does particularly well, maybe I'll dabble into anime stuff, and obviously video game adaptations as they come out. And don't forget, only you can help balance out my unbalanced sub ratio count. I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> but enough from me gushing, let's talk a little about where the series can go from here. And I'll be starting off by saying this, I'm not really an expert on all things Studio Trigger. I'd seen all of Kill the Kill way back when that was coming out and have since done some research into Little Witch Academia and BNA, but beyond that, I don't know the ins and outs of every project they've made. That being said, they do have quite an artistically noticeable aesthetic. Studio Trigger animations are oftentimes incredibly colourful and dynamic. The narrative similarly mimics that with these bombastic over-the-top styles to match the animation, which while still executed fantastically, does leave me a little intrigued for the likes of Cyberpunk. I'm not sure that I'd exactly call it cutesy, considering the way the action scenes go, but there certainly is a softer edge around the general designs of their shows. And so I think it'd be interesting to see how this is adapted into something I perceive as more grounded like Cyberpunk is. I imagine there'll be some kind of compromise between the two styles that'll be met in the middle. After all, while Cyberpunk is that gritty reality type of world, it does admittedly have some pretty fantastical approaches to its combat that could absolutely be expanded upon. Really, when looking up how Studio Trigger's different shows presented themselves, I figured something more akin to BNA was probably the most likely interpretation we'd be seeing from a Cyberpunk animation. Or at least that's my thoughts. So, okay, I guess we've got a vision to match our expectations. Where can the series go from here? Well, for a start, the only major detail we know about the story is that it is set in the same world as Cyberpunk. So, let's look into more of how Night City functions in Cyberpunk 2077. The entire game takes place pretty much in this one city and its surrounding area. It's described as a megalopolis, obsessed with power, glamour and technology, and many of the residents have body modifications to make life easier for themselves. It's located in the free state of Northern California, and by 2020, it had 5 million inhabitants. By 2077, it was voted the worst place to live in America and yet it is ever popular regardless of that title, hosting 9 million tourists, conventioneers, and corporate travelers every single year. 
Still, the city is overrun by corporations, corruption, organized crime, and gang violence. Currency is Euro dollars, sometimes called eddies, and the transport system is pretty advanced, hosting an extensive network of urban freeways and metro rails to most places, apart from in districts where these service lines are damaged, like in Pacifica. Speaking of districts, there are several in Night City. The city center is the commercial district, containing tall skyscrapers and being home to corporations. There's Watson, being more Asian influenced and home to immigrants. Westbrook is largely Japanese, home to the wealthy elites. Haywood has growing gangs is largely Latino but also a little bit wealthy, and then Pacifica again is the slums, all full of gangs. That alone paints a pretty diverse picture of the groundwork surrounding Night City, and judging by the faint description we already have of our anime protagonist's background, it seems fairly safe to assume that he comes from a less privileged background, hearkening more towards a Pacifica kind of upbringing garnering his street knowledge early on to survive and expanding into the rest of the city as he grows as a person. Interestingly, in the actual game, you can pick your protagonist's different backstories. Maybe they were born in Haywood, or maybe they came from outside the city. There are a little bit more customizable options from the game's front. Beyond those districts, there's also the Orbital Airspace Center, which is an aerospace center allowing for space transportation. This certainly seems to lean into some pretty interesting expansions, both for the core game as well as for the anime itself. After all, there does seem to be a bit of a running theme with Studio Trigger anime ending up in some big space battle in the sky, so I guess things could just spiral back round to that again. Wouldn't that be something? But even still, this is all just speculation on my part, so let's ground ourselves back once again. Edge Runners is the name of the anime, but what more does it mean? Well, it's not much, but the name has been used before in the cyberpunk franchise. Edge Runner Inc. is the name of a source book used to supplement the pen and paper RPG Cyberpunk 2020. It's written as an in-universe recruitment agency list that the players can use to read up on all sorts of new characters and scenarios to service them. It's also created by a subdivision of a company in-game who target down on their luck cyberpunks and hire them to do questionable tasks. Kinda your run-of-the-mill stuff. And really, all this tells us is that the anime will be following the kind of lifestyle of these low-class mercenaries just trying to make their way in life, taking on all sorts of morally grey side quests and presumably growing some opinions of their own over time as an actual narrative is struck together. Kind of your standard stuff. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is said to be a love letter to cyberpunk as a whole and to stories told in animated form. The entire genre of cyberpunk was only made when the anime creators were in their teens. So really, this is their chance to fully hop onto a whole new type of world and do it justice. Which is exactly what this series intends to do. It's just as much about cyberpunk the genre as it is cyberpunk the world. Which is just exciting to see since actual cyberpunk worlds in the media seem fairly scarce beyond screenshots and artwork, I feel. Anyway, the final piece of information we really have to go off of on this upcoming anime series is the one image there is to present the whole idea, and that is this single poster design right here. And really, you can already kind of see the not quite cutie design I was mentioning earlier. It's a strange compromise between that admittedly realistic kind of world and a kind of cartoony flair as well. I mean, the sky is yellow. That's some real persona stylishness. As for the actual character design right up front, I'm honestly a little hesitant to call it canon. I mean, to me at least, the guy just looks straight up like the male protagonist V from the game, and we've already established that this will be an entirely different set of characters. Adding on to that, our anime's description describes our main character as a kid, and when I look at either design of V from the games, it's clear they're not quite a kid, they're canonically 22. Though maybe they're just pushing the boundaries for what defines a kid, I don't know. Even still, this is our first look at how the anime will look. It's towering, bright, presumably pretty kinetic, and it's got that classic studio trigger glare. And with the team behind Cyberpunk being all about quality over profits, the release date of the game has been delayed a little bit again, now to November 19th, 2020, with multiplayer appearing later next year. And though the anime has been worked on since 2018 apparently, that too won't be getting a release until the distant day of 2022. But though the delays are bad news, it's comforting to know that everyone working on these projects is doing their absolute best to give us the best results they can, even if more time is needed. 
And hey, further to player convenience, apparently if you have the current gen version of the game, then you can get the upgraded next generation version for free as well. That's fantastic to hear. I myself am actually planning to buy a console this generation with the PlayStation 5 at the end of the year, and who knows, maybe I'll actually use that Twitch link at the end of every video to stream some of it. I'm certainly all sorts of pumped up for this thing. Whether this anime series expands into future seasons after this, who knows? The community around Cyberpunk 2077 has certainly grown exponentially with all of their cross-media marketing, and even on CD Projekt Red's other works, there's still news of expansions, with The Witcher getting an anime adaptation too, as well as a comic book spin-off of Cyberpunk titled Trauma Team, all about the medical corporation of the city. That's wild. Whatever the case, CD Projekt Red has cemented themselves as one of the greatest video game studios from every single angle, and the team behind Studio Trigger's Cyberpunk Edge Runners only seems to boast more of some outstanding content for all of us to consume sometime in the future. I'll be here meanwhile, waiting on every new detail to be announced as time goes by. For now, my name's been Daz, you don't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> I'm seriously so excited for Cyberpunk 2077. Not many games have caught my eye recently, but everything about what they're doing here just blows me away every time. I really hope I can stream my experiences too. Man.